Last week I made a video about how the Norse discovered Iceland during the 9th century, and I asked would you like to see more videos on this kind of topic, and loads of people said yes, and the most popular one was by far the what did the Vikings do and how did they get to North America, so of course I'm going to keep you all happy and make a video on this very soon. But the logical stopping point between Iceland and North America is Greenland, and so in this video I'm going to explain how the Norse discovered Greenland, because this is vital to understanding how they discovered North America. So strap in, this is going to be another History with Hilbert video about the Norse discoveries across the Atlantic Ocean. To understand a little bit about Greenland, we need to put it in its geographical context. It is a full 200 or roughly 200 miles from Iceland and the strait of water between Greenland and Iceland is very dangerous as the, it's obviously in the Arctic and there's lots of icebergs in between them and it's called the Denmark Strait. However, it's connected to North America or it has a strait between itself and North America that's only 20 miles wide which is really small and Greenland is actually classed as being North America. Now, unlike Iceland, there were no monks living on the island. If you're interested, there were Irish monks living on Iceland before the arrival of the Norse, and I actually have a video about this. And a common misconception is that when the Norse arrived in Greenland, they first encountered Native Americans. And although there were Native Americans in the very north of Greenland at the time, actually the Norse were the indigenous inhabitants of the southern part of Greenland. They were the first people to arrive there, although I'll make more videos about this soon. The discovery and settlement settlement of Iceland was essential to the discovery and later settlement of Greenland, as it essentially acted as a stepping stone between the two, and most of the guys who actually went to Greenland were Icelanders, as there were land shortages in Iceland around this time, which is why perhaps people started to look westwards for new places to settle. Now the first man we're going to look at is a man named Gunnbjörn Ulfsson, and Gunnbjörn Ulfsson actually was on his way back from Norway to Iceland, he was probably getting wood, and on the, on the way back to Iceland he was blown off course and caught sight of land to the north of Iceland. And we now think that these were the, actually the islands off the coast of Greenland. So he potentially is the first attested European to have seen North America. Or so we thought, until a, I think he's a physicist called uh, Valdemar Len actually said what he saw wasn't Greenland, but what was called an Arctic mirage, which is essentially where um, it's like in the desert when you see a mirage, it's something that's not actually there, although it is, but just further away. Essentially what happens is Greenland, there's lots of ice on Greenland, hot air, which is a lot hotter than the ice, which is obviously very cold, rises above the um, really cold of the uh, ice sheet on Greenland and essentially it distorts the the rays of air. Now my brother's a physicist, I'm not, but that's essentially what happens, the kind of your vision um, is distorted because of the heat which changes. It's the same in the desert on really hot days and it's true in the Arctic which why I called Arctic mirages on very cold days. And the Old Norse, very interesting, actually have a word for this phenomenon which is Hillingar and this it's amazing that they knew about these arctic mirages so it you know again it's just an interesting bit of trivia in there. Now this handsome young whippersnapper who went by the name of Snabjörn Galte is the next person we're going to look at and he was actually the first person to set foot on Greenland and there was no one saying it was a mirage this time. He set off from Iceland with the intention of going to Greenland and made landfall somewhere in the east of the country we're not exactly sure where and he he tried to create the first settlement on Greenland as others had done on Iceland for example. However, things didn't quite go that well and in the winter he got into a fight with another one of his crew and was killed and the settlement completely failed and the others either died or went back to Norway. But that obviously wasn't the end of the story. In Iceland, a man named Eiríkir Hinn Ráði, or to use his English name, Eric the Red, actually got involved in some dirty business. When some of his thralls accidentally started a landslide on another man's land, who then went on to kill them. No wonder he was called Foul, named after his temper. So Eric, in the true Viking fashion, also kills that man, gets banished to an island, manages to make some enemies on that island and kill another man, and for this he is sentenced to three years exile by the Thing of Iceland. But for Eirikur, this kind of thing ran in the family. 
Eric's father was a man called Thorvald Asfaldsson, and he was also actually kicked out of Norway 20 years earlier during the reign of Hakon IV, also called Hakon the Good, because he, you guessed it, killed someone. So, this is actually where we come to a very interesting thing about this family, which is that Thorvald Asfaldsson's father was a man named Asvald Ulfsson. And Asvald Ulfsson's father was a man named Ulf Oxen Thorisson. And you can see again the Scandinavian naming system at play here. And Ulf Oxen Thorisson's father was a man named Oxen Thorir. And who was the brother of Oxen Thorir? None other than Nadother, the first man to set foot on Iceland. You wouldn't have guessed, would you? Conspiracy. Being exiled from Iceland, it might make sense that Eric would choose to go back to Norway. But of course, his father had been an outlaw, he was done for manslaughter on Iceland. So actually, he decides to instead sail west, and he came to the western coast of Greenland. And while he was here for the entire three years, he explored the island, which is one of the biggest on Earth. And he found, you know, places right throughout the island. He went to the north as well, uh, through to the east and the west, and had a really good exploration of Greenland at the time. And after he did this, he, after his three years, he returned to Iceland and told the people of what he had seen. Iceland at the time was in a very bad state. And this is where I'm going to stop this video, because in future I'm going to make a how did the Norse settle Greenland, which is where I will cover how the settlement process began, which of course links in very well to this video. So thanks very much for watching. This has been my History with Hilbert video on how the Norse discovered Greenland. Now. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and as always, please do consider giving me a thumbs up and if you'd like to know anything more then ask a comment in, ask a question in the comment section below and I'm sure a lot of people will have various opinions about this. Now I do have a small announcement to make. Now I have actually created a Patreon. Now the reason I've done this is uh, several fold. One of them is that a few people have asked me that they would like to donate and they asked me, have you got a Patreon? And I've made one not in the hope or the thought that a lot of people will actually donate to this. And I definitely don't want people to go out of their way to donate to me. This is a free channel. I'm not going to be putting a lot of special content on Patreon because I think that my work should be available for everyone. And of course, not everyone can financially support me and that's completely fine. I don't want people to support me who can't support me or don't want to. That's completely your own choice as it should be. But for those who do want to, then you can support me on Patreon. I've put it to the monthly system. I'm fairly new to how it all works. But I believe that means you pledge something like a, a dollar a month or more if you're that crazy that you want to give me money or whatever. Um, what will I do with the money that I get on Patreon? Well, I will think of some things that can benefit the Patreons, as I said, obviously, um, or the patrons, they're actually called, sorry, patrons. Um, obviously, I'm not going to put loads of stuff on Patreon that I'm not going to put on, obviously, the main channel on YouTube, but things that the money will go towards is I have actually been going to places and filming there for History with Hilbert recently. Obviously, I have to use public transport, and this means that, uh, obviously, it's not free. Um, other things are that when I have to research videos, I do buy books and things to look uh, to get information from that kind of thing so the money that I am um, you know that I hope um, and that I will be very thankful to receive from anyone who does want to on patreon that money will go to helping the channel for me for my research perhaps for some giveaways in the future for if uh, I'm going to look into opening a discord because that's something that's been requested then the money that I earn on Patreon, I promise, I pledge to use the Patreon lingo, will go to furthering the channel uh, for creating videos and things like that. And of course, I get so many different requests for this video topic and this video topic on the channel. There are way too many and I'm really thankful for everyone who does that, you know, that gets some really interesting requests. 
but Patreon, um, if you are a patron, then it might be an easier way for me to sort of choose one or two topics, um, because I, I honestly do get so many, it would sort of thin the crowd a bit. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do the videos that my lovely subscribers do give to me that they want to see. And I actually have the uh, channel survey, the results for that coming out very soon. So don't you worry about that. And again, um, if anyone does want to, then that's fine. If no one wants to, that's completely fine either. I am fine either way. So thanks everyone. I hope you understand why I've created a Patreon. Uh, there's a link to it in the description below, but after this, I'm not really going to go on about it too much because it's that's not why I'm doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I love history, love languages, and I love my subscribers. You're all great. So thanks very much for watching. I'm History with Hilbert. Don't forget to tune in again next time and stay awesome. Oh, that's the wrong button.